Is 45 ACP any good anymore? Is it just FUD lore that it's better than 9mm? So I'm going to do a test today comparing it to 9mm. And I have an ammunition that has been requested quite a bit since I did my last test of 45 ACP. And that is the Federal HST 230 grain jacketed hollow point. It is a plus P, as is the 9mm. The 9mm is a 124 grain plus P 9mm. And honestly, I think that's one of the best 9mm that exists nowadays. So I want to see, you know, does the 45 ACP is it not really do any better than 9mm like a lot of people are telling me? I don't know. I've tested this one time in the past, but it was so long ago and my ballistics gel was so incredibly cloudy. I couldn't even see what it was I was getting. That was like three and a half years ago. So I decided to come out and test it again. So I'm going to use my 5-inch pistols here, my 5.3-inch Glock 41 to test the 45 ACP. It's not a 21, it's a 41. And then my 5-inch barrel Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 to test the 9mm. So we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my 10% clear ballistic test. We're going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are. No denim in the way or anything like that to clog a hollow point. So, you know, just in case we don't get hollow point expansion through our real-world simulation, we can at least see what the expansion is supposed to look like in plain gel. So... We're going to go into plain clear ballistics, then we'll do our real world simulation. Four layers of cotton sweatshirt on this first three inch piece that represents our pectoral muscle. After that, a quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent ribs or sternum. That'll be our real world simulation. So we'll do a plain clear ballistics shot and a real world simulation. And then I am going to shoot at the steel target to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our nine millimeter rated at 1200 feet per second. I believe that's through a four inch barrel. And our 45 ACP is rated at 950 feet per second. I believe that's through a 5-inch barrel. So we should see some velocity gain with our 9mm, maybe not with our 45 ACP. So 9mm, rated at 1,200 feet per second through a 4-inch. Let's see what I get in my 5-inch barrel here. Twelve ninety-two. 1290, 1273, 1280, 1267. So we have very good velocity for what that is. 45 ACP, um, in my last test of this about three and a half years ago, I did get a couple malfunctions with this. I looked through a lot of the footage I took, actually most of it, and what I found was that this pistol is very reliable with standard pressure ammo. I think I've only had one or two malfunctions over the past seven years with this, with standard pressure ammo. Whenever it's a plus P and a 230 grain, when that combination happens, I seem to get more malfunctions. So I did bring out my NDZ 22 pound spring to put in this if this stock spring that's in it doesn't run it. But let's see what we get here for velocity rated at 950 feet per second. Let's see what I get here. 932, 968, 969, 980, 990. So really good velocity overall. And it seems to run thus far. So let's hit our ballistics gel block and see how these compare. All right, first shot into a plain clear ballistics. We'll do our nine millimeter, then our 45 ACP. No denim in the way to clog a hollow point. Let's see if it gets our nine millimeter here. All right. Set that with our 45 ACP. Let's go take a look. All right, so I could actually see the bullet from the front of this block when I was looking through and I was really impressed with what I saw with that 45 ACP. Just a massive flower, huge bullet going on. And the 9mm is, is big too, but like the, the 45 didn't even tilt very much as where the 9mm did the typical thing of wanting to kind of tilt a little bit after it expanded. Both of these did fantastic in plain gel. 
We can definitely see some energy dump with the nine millimeter on the bottom and the 45 on top. Typically we don't get a whole lot of energy dump with nine millimeter and that's why for years I've kind of not liked it, but I've noticed with, with HST, we typically do get quite a bit of energy dump even with nine millimeter. Huge amount of tearing going on. Both of them look really good. Our nine millimeter is a little bit shallow on penetration. We're at about 11 and a half inches. Camera parallax will make it look like that bullet's setting at like 12, 12 and a half inches. But uh, yeah, we're right there at about 11 and a half inches. Our 45 ACP has more mass to it. So it's gonna push a little deeper, a little more momentum. More momentum. About 14, 14 and a quarter inches of penetration, which is pretty similar to what the old school um, Hydroshock got, 230 grain Hydroshock. And that has a pretty high stopping power number. So I would say both of these are doing pretty good. Let's put on our fabric, put in our rib simulation and see how they compare in more of our real world simulation. All right, four layers of cotton sweatshirt, three inches of clear ballistics to represent our pectoral muscle. Uh, clear ballistics is like kind of a half representation of flesh. So it's kind of like an um, inch and a half of actual muscle. Then a quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent hitting ribs or sternum. Let's see what we get with our nine millimeter. All right, let me set that back up and hit it with the 45 ACP. All right, 45 ACP, real world simulation. Let's see what this does. Let's go take a look. All right. Um, one thing I did notice here was there was less, you know, kickback of this whole ballistics gel block. And that typically happens when we don't get a whole lot of kickback of this is when we don't have a ton of energy dump in this first three inches. And we can kind of see that going through our first three inches here. Um, and the top here going through our denim, it does look like our 45 ACP failed to get as big of energy dump and expansion right away as the nine millimeter. And the nine millimeter expanded right away, which is really good. We don't typically see that with nine millimeter. And the bottom through our MDF, our nine millimeter on the top, our 45 ACP. So what we see going on here is it looks like the nine millimeter probably did a little bit better because it looks like the expansion is more consistent but that being said there's a ton more damage and there's more penetration with our 45 acp so our nine millimeter a lot of good damage even going through our rib simulation we stopped at a very ideal penetration of 15 and a half inches a 45 acp this wound track is quite a bit bigger um looks a little more impressive which is interesting because their expansion isn't that big and we went to 19 inches of penetration what it looks like happening is that one side of those pedals started to expand out and the other side didn't. So that kind of caused the energy dump to be kind of low, but because it's a big old 45 bullet, it still did a massive amount of damage. So looking at this, both are pretty equal here. I would say, statistically speaking, if we're looking at, you know, getting close to the FBI protocol, I don't do an exact FBI protocol, but getting, you know, close to the numbers they want to see. Our nine millimeter did kind of better here, except under penetrating in our plain gel shop by, you know, a good half inch. And we kind of over penetrated by an inch with our 45. So looking at all of this here, it's hard for me to t tell which one did better. If I had to pick one of these for defense, it's kind of a toss up. I think the 45 in the real world would do a little bit better. It'd be a little bit more effective. That being said, follow-up shots and reliability might be not quite as good with the 45 because you kind of got to know how to shoot to shoot a 230 grain plus P very well. So let's pull these out of the block and we'll, then we'll try to answer some of those questions. So we'll pull these out of the block, take a close-up look at these bullets, then I'll shoot our steel and see if there really is a big difference in recoil control. So let's do that. All right, so here's a close-up look at these bullets and looking at these here I was you know concerned by you know the real-world simulation shot of these um, How the 45 didn't look like it did as good, but 
when we look at these going through plain gel, it's hard to discredit this. Just look at the size of this 45 ACP. Our nine millimeter is big, very big. It looks fantastic. But it is very miniature compared to that 45 ACP. That is some massive, wicked expansion. It's funny because the, 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 the pedals, the jackets around the pedals peeled back, but the lead is still sticking out straight, which is very impressive. Now, when we look at our shot going through our medium density fiberboard, this is where things change up. Here is our nine millimeter, very, very typical for an HST or even a gold dot. They do typically shrink down when you hit, um, you know, fabric and rip simulation. That's just how they are. Doesn't mean it's bad. It still did pretty good. Our 45 ACP, not particularly impressive. I haven't measured these yet. I could just about say, I think this is probably bigger around than this. So technically it's better but it's not very consistent and when i'm looking for a good defensive cartridge i'm looking for consistency i like to see consistency you know in the real world i think this would probably actually be more effective than this but you know it's hard to argue with how good this looks so a big difference there in our performance between both of these you know hollow point expansion is dependent on many different factors bullet design bullet material energy numbers and velocity you know, typically 45 ACP, you know, you're going to expand it with good energy. But when it comes to velocity, at the end of the day, the velocity makes probably the biggest difference in whether something consistently expands or not. When you hit well over 1,200 feet per second, it's very rare that you don't have consistent expansion. And we were well over that with this very, very fast velocity, very close to like a plus P plus velocity almost. As for this, we just didn't have enough velocity, but overall, 45 looks so good right there. It's it's hard not to throw these away and say 45 wins. Look at that. Uh, but realistically, I would say if we take into everything into consideration, I think they both did about as good as each other. So that's a close up look at those. All right, so I'm roughly about 14 yards from the target. I had to back up to block out some of that sunlight, harsh sunlight with the trees. Um, but I'm just going to get a sight picture, pop off some rounds, and see which is easier for me to land on target. And I'm just an average guy here. Uh, a lot of the YouTube trolls recently have told me how I don't know how to shoot or do anything right. So don't think that I'm like an expert here. I'm just a regular dude. And I'm just going to make some shots, see how they feel for me from a regular guy's perspective. So 9 millimeter. let's see how I can do with this. So I'm not going from groups, I'm just popping them off as fast as I think I can hit the target. And I did pull one kind of low. So let's see how I do with our 45 here. All right, I let that second shot kind of go over the target. Um, I kind of didn't control that recoil very well. So I had a miss with both of them. So yeah, the 9mm is a little easier to shoot. Uh, but can't really tell a big difference in overall accuracy with both of these so let me go back a little bit further and actually aim better with these and see how they do for me for accuracy all right so i was going to come back from maybe 40 yards from the target but i thought you know i got my long slides out today got a little bit better sight radius than typical probably won't see a whole lot different from 40 yards versus 75 yards for my ability to hit the target so just for fun let's see what i can do with these so nine millimeter plus p Let's see I can do us this from 75 yards. pretty good accuracy overall for this nine millimeter load thoroughly impressed with everything that this nine millimeter hst plus p can do seems like the perfect load 45 acp 
Let's see if this hits the steel any harder. We'll definitely hit it slower. Oh, <laughs> I missed that and like I was thinking was probably gonna happen, happened. So you know what? I'm gonna go up and get my ND, NDZ spring. I've only got a few rounds left, but go up and get my ND, NDZ spring, my 22 pound spring, and see if that will make any difference at all with this. All right, so I got my 22 pound spring in here, and I think that's part of the reason why um, I get malfunctions. Maybe they'll still malfunction, but this is a Glock 41 and not a 21. The flat slide is thinner, and even though it's longer than a 21, I think it shaves off like good four ounces versus the 21 and weight so when we start getting lower down in the magazine with ammo that's when i normally start to see issues with plus p ammo so i'll see if this makes any difference it might not but let's see what i can do here keep going So definitely not as good with that ammo, uh, but I'm going to take note. I think that the spring weight here is what's making the difference here uh, for reliability. You know, you go down to like, a, I think it's 26 ounces and you hit, put some plus P in it and it starts having issues, but I don't have any issues when I'm running standard pressure. So I think that's kind of part of what the issue is here. So definitely not as accurate with this for me. So judging from this test here, if I had to pick one of these to carry, I would pick the 9mm because I think it performed a little bit better in this scenario. 45 ACP plus P is kind of a handful. Um, it's not a huge recoil, but it's more than what I think a lot of people are comfortable with. As for standard pressure, 45 ACP isn't so bad for recoil. So between both of these here, our 9mm did everything we wanted it to do with less recoil. And it was more accurate for me just easier to shoot overall and that's not to say that the, the hst 45 acp plus p isn't a great round it seems to be but i think it's probably more suited for a 1911 or a heavier pistol than this maybe even a glock 21 instead of this uh, but overall both of them did pretty well so you know back to my original question you know is it like fud lore to say that the, the 45 acp is better than the nine millimeter i think ultimately overall no you know there's been a lot of you know conducted data with the two different cartridges and it shows that the 45 is more effective granted a lot of that is outdated data and a lot of the improvements with you know, nine millimeter do make it a little bit more effective that being said if that technology were applied better to the 45 acp I think we would get a lot better performance out of it. Like I don't see as many 185 grain plus P's as what you'd think there would be. That would be the perfect bullet weight and velocities to do to pretty much outdo 40 Smith to Wesson 9 millimeter plus P, a whole bunch of other cartridges. But they just don't load that like that very much with that technology. And I wish that they would. But overall, here both of these did pretty well. But if I had to pick one of these. I'm going to go with the 9mm because it was just a little more consistent for me. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.